The views and opinions expressed by hosts, invited speakers, and callers do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the Black Talk Media Project or the Black Talk Radio Network. Revolution comes with a price tag. You were slave to a flag in a country that clearly doesn't love you when they probably never have. Told you turn the other cheek. And they made it with a bat. Fucking protesting them sit-ins. Told you go fight in the war. Vietnam, you died good riddance. The man of the house rule took you from your siblings. Turned around a pump crack right up in your city. And they turned all your leaders to martyrs. You was off in the war. Now who was guarding your daughters? It was riots in the streets. Killed Malcolm and Martin. Called the National Guard up because we ride with our guard up. And that was blood in your garden. Second Amendment on the plot. To you. Everything that they taught you was a lie to you. See, they get in your skin and they die in the shoot. Take the American dream and then you die to pursue. One day it'll all make sense. We said that about power, then it don't make sense. But none of that money matters when you live in madness. So one day you figure out that all you got is this. Peace, love, and the middle finger. Right on. Peace, love, and the middle finger. Right on. Peace, love, and the middle finger. Right on. Peace, love, and the middle finger. For those of you who don't. Good afternoon. You are tuned in to Black Talk Radio News. Scotty Reed in for this broadcast from behind these enemy lines known as USA Inc. Today's date is January 12th, 2016. Almost halfway through uh, the first month of the new so called year with much of the same old, same old going on, sadly. Um, today we'll just have an open forum. If you uh, have any questions, any comments, any news or information you would like to share, take that opportunity today. Although I do want to uh, have a general theme for today's broadcast of what is the state of black people in the United States. Because we know uh, the CEO of USA Inc., President Obama, will be giving his Last State of the Union address tonight. I've been seeing, you know, a whole lot of chatter out there about his upcoming State of the Union, um, especially when you're looking at platforms like, you know, corporate news media. They've been talking a lot about the last state of the state. I was just checking out uh, PBS. They had T- Tabit Smiley on there um, giving his thoughts about, you know, uh, the state of black America cause you know him and I believe it was Tabby Smiley as well as Cornell West who come out with an annual state of the black black America I, I could be wrong about that since that I remember something like that but Tabby Smiley uh, has always been objective see I, I started to use the word critical uh, but he's he's been objective in his analysis of the Obama administration, and he caught a lot of heat for that from, um, I would just simply describe them as emotional black people. Emotional black people, why are you attacking the first black president? Why are you talking bad about him or his policies? And Because they never made it personal. They were just simply looking at the data. As they would look at the data of any president, you know, looked at the data of, under Bush, under Clinton. I mean, just because there's a, a black person occupying a position doesn't mean that we're not supposed to uh, treat them equally as we would treat anyone else. They shouldn't get any special breaks or considerations. They should be judged based on their job performance, just like everybody else. So let's take a look, you know, what are your thoughts um, out there about the state of the black union? I would have to say it's extremely messed up. The state of, I don't, you know, it's it's just, man, nothing good that we can point out and say that, you know, under this president, under this administration, under the U.S. government or USA Inc., that black people made such strides. 
Now they were uh, when, when Tablas was doing his segment with I don't know that white woman's name on PBS, but they threw up the figure of 8.2 percent unemployment in the black community. 8.2 percent. All right, and I think the unemployment rate for America in general is something like six, somewhere around there, six percent, between six and seven percent. But those aren't really the real unemployment numbers. Those are the number of people who got unemployment benefits or sought unemployment benefits during whatever uh, reporting period, whatever quarter they're talking about. And, And so that doesn't mean that all these people who were, let's say, unemployed in December now in January have found jobs and therefore we're lowering the numbers. No. Those people dropped off the rolls doesn't mean that they actually found a job. They either maxed out their unemployment benefits, um, maxed out their unemployment benefits, so they're no longer checking in with anybody and saying, you know, I went and looked for three jobs this week. They, you know, that's not to say they're still not looking for jobs. They're just again, I, my whole. Uh, issue is with these numbers is they don't tell the true number of the unemployed within the United States. Because I saw another report that said in the month of December, only the United States, well, not just the United States government, but let's say the job creators, as Mitt Romney would call them, uh, they only created 12,000 jobs in the month of December. That's all the U.S. um uh, government reported was the creation of 12,000 jobs. That's not a whole lot of jobs, man. That's like pretty, pretty pathetic. And so I'm sure creating 12,000 jobs did not drop the unemployment, the real unemployment rate, you know, uh, any percentage points whatsoever. So we had to, you know, take these things into consideration. When they start talking about, oh, the unemployment rate is this or that, usually just just figure on tripling it or quadrupling it for the black community. So what what is the state of the black America? I mean, how many jobs were created in 2015 um, by black owned businesses? How many people did they employ? Because, see, we don't even know that because when they say minority businesses that includes white women that's not you know what i'm saying that's not saying you know just black people it's everybody that's classified as a minority uh, by the federal government and that includes women women regardless of their ethnic ethnicity how many jobs were created in, in a Hispanic community? How many did they, you know, how many new businesses started up and how many people did they employ? Because a lot of small businesses, a lot of people don't know this, and I, I didn't always know it, but most of these so-called new businesses that's being created, we hear about. I saw a, a, a report earlier about, you know, all these black women with degrees are starting all these business, but a lot of those businesses don't even employ anyone. They just employ the person who created the business. So, you know, when we say all these businesses were created, that doesn't necessarily translate into all these jobs were created as a result of a person um, creating a business. You know, on Tando Radio Show, which will be on air today, they talk a lot about uh, economic issues, currency, precious metals, and and whatnot, what true wealth is, and and things of that matter. But even if we accept um, what most people in the United States are calling wealth, and that's that Federal Reserve notes, um, if we just look at that and, and, and use that as the qualifier of, you know, how much wealth do black people have? We hear they have a trillion dollars uh, spending uh, annually. That's what they spend, a trillion dollars. And so a lot of that is like, you know, uh, on on utilities, rent, mortgages, things of that nature. 
So uh, and a lot of this is discret. It's not really um, what we would call um, what would we say extra money, extra spending money. We're not running around just because people are spending a trillion annually in the black community doesn't mean there's abundance of wealth. That's just collectively. That's how much they spend them, whether it's on a gas bill, whether it's to pay for little Johnny's lunch. Cause, you know, the government lowered the standards and now they're saying even though I'm at the federal poverty level, I still don't qualify for food stamps or he doesn't qualify for free lunch and, and whatnot. But so, you know, we got to come out of pocket and pay. So, you know, that trillion dollars is not does not is not an indicator of wealth I, I guess is what i'm saying and then you know we talk about wealth in terms of owning land owning property you know i i've yet to hear anybody talk about well did um the black community recover from the uh what was that the 2008 mortgage bubble that burst did it, you know everybody lost these homes and what not put down down payments or even if it was low down payments or no down payments you still you know invested in paying that mortgage until you know you found out you was in a predatory loan and what not and, and you really couldn't afford to stay in there so you know uh, a lot of people lost a lot of wealth or property in the past eight years not saying that we're blaming it on one CEO because you know it's a trickle down effect these policies you know being implemented uh, by whatever CEO of America they're usually carried over into the next administration and you know there might be some tweaking and what not going on but how has black America recovered any of its losses we know the bankers and, and the banks got bailed out. They got bailed out, you know, and they are the ones that created the mess, the financial disaster that almost brought down the global economy, at least in terms of capitalism, that is. So, I mean, the bankers got bailed out by the U.S. taxpayer and all the rest of America got was a little stimulus, so-called stimulus check. You know, piece of paper that said that you can get these many reserve notes and, you know, you go out and spend it. Well, you know, that that doesn't amount. <laughs> I don't know how much people were getting. I didn't get a stimulus check, but I heard anywhere from 500 to to $1,000. Well, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. That you got to turn around and go right back out and, and spend because, you know, that is how this system works. Don't work if people ain't spending money. That's a flawed system. If it requires people spending money all the time, and then when there are no jobs, so they give you a stimulus check. Well, here's a little something, something for you to go out and spend and help. Help us keep this this uh, crazy system going that we should have let fail in 2008, but uh, yeah, we wanted to save it and we wanted to bail out all these rich people. No sense of them losing all their wealth. We'll just you know put it on the backs of the working poor and the so-called middle class. So, what is the state of Black America? It seems like you know pretty dire to me. One of the things um, I want to throw out there, and I will go over some news items uh, during the next 45 minutes, some of the news that we got posted for you to our social media, uh, Facebook page. When We're not always uh, able to write articles, although I have published a couple of articles. Published one last night on blacktalkradionetwork.com, put it in the blog section. But I will go over those. But yeah, I want to talk about something um, in terms of the CEO of USA Inc. Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, uh, last year, several times last year, you know, I've heard her say it's time for black people to put demands on the first black president. That he isn't, he isn't running for office anymore. 
He doesn't need you to turn out in huge numbers at the polls and vote for him. And he only has a year, you know, coming up on January the 20th. He will have exactly one year left in office. And Dr. Francis Cress Wilson said it is time for black people to demand that he do something to end racism or, or to do something to at least impact racism so that it's not able to function as smoothly as what is functioning to give black people some kind of re relief as much as he can some kind of relief under this system of racism and white supremacy that he has been a, you know chosen to be the CEO of to do something and I just don't see that happening collectively collectively now of course you know individuals here individuals there who have been making demands on him Tavis Smiley Cornell West and, and others and I'm talking about showcase people got got a high profile millions of people get to hear what they have to say about this or or that so they've been making those demands, and, and I suspect they will continue to uh, do what they've always been doing in making demands on the CEO, Obama, to do something about all this police violence, to do something about all of this poverty, these lack of jobs, all these schools being closed. And then, two. If, if, you know, I, I, I want to go back to something. If um, in in the job creation, and again, they only they say they only created twelve thousand jobs last year. Uh, and no, excuse me, in the last month of last year, December. I wonder how many of those jobs. I wonder how many jobs they created by virtue of arresting somebody and convicting them on a nonviolent so-called drug offense or some other sort of nonviolent victimless people activity that they have codified to, to, to call crime, you know, whether that's, you know, people engaged in prostitution or whatnot. We may not, you know, like that people engage in those things, and I bet you those people don't like to engage in those things either, but some people are forced to do whatever it is they have to do to survive, but long as they're not harming anyone else, and they only engage with other consenting adults, I don't see what the problem is. I don't see why they should be incarcerated, in fact, enslaved on a prison plantation to, uh, you know, do a job. So how many jobs were created on the prison plantation in 2015, or even in December alone. So, you know, Dr. Frances Cress Wilson, I, I distinctly remember her saying that in 2015. It's time for black people to put demands on President Obama in his last year of office. We've been silent collectively. We've been silent. We've been defending him whenever these white people attack him, whether the, the, uh, quote unquote attacks were based in actual evidence that was wrong, of wrongdoing or not or whether they were just being racist you defended him carte blanche you know you, you, you defended him at every turn you have not sought to hold him responsible for your well being and to do anything specific you know towards improving your community and whatnot. So, you know, is that going to happen now? Are, are the showcase non-governmental organizations who have access to the president have his ear? Are, are, are they behind the scenes, you know, pressing him to do something? And what would we have him do? What would you have him do out there? You know, he just took executive action on, on some gun, uh, um, gun control to, um, it, you know, require people buying guns online and buying them at gun shows, requiring uh, them 
the sellers to do background checks on the people they selling these guns to. He took executive action for that. We know he took executive action to um, end gender discrimination and uh, even allow uh, gay people to openly serve in the, in the army, in the military, I should say. No more discriminating against gays and, and, and homosexuals or, or lesbians or transgenders. You can now openly serve in the United States military through the executive action that the executive officer, the chief executive officer, took. All right, what else did he do? He, he took some other actions. I know he's supposed to take some uh, executive actions in the coming days on some homeland security issues and nobody's making a big stink about it. I'm still trying to get the details on that as I was reading about that as I was going through uh, my uh, sources, my intelligence sources. So he's supposed to be, you know, making a move on that. So what, what executive action can he take to impact racism in a racist system as exercised through the federal government, the executive branch of the government? which controls the ATF, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. That's who will be doing, requiring these gun dealers to do background checks. The Drug Enforcement Agency, you know, the ones that had a deal with Chapo, uh, what, what's the drug dealer's name that they just arrested and talking about extraditing to the United States. You know, DEA had a deal with him with his organization to allow him to smuggle drugs into the United States as long as he snitched or narked on uh, other rival cartels. You know, if you can tell us when your rivals are going to have a shipment, a major shipment, and then you give us that information, and instead of us trying to stop your shipment, we'll go after their shipment. And when we bust them, we can then take pictures of money and drugs and guns and say we are really doing something to it. we're making strides in the war on drugs and the whole time you got the Sinaloa drug cartel smuggling tons of drugs straight up the highway to Chicago so you know that's 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 under the CEO the chief executive officers branch of government so that's the DEA Man, I can go on all day about the things the DEA been involved in. Uh, the Justice Department, you know, the Justice Department, um, which also uh, facilitates these police departments getting these grants and stuff to prosecute the drug war or to go after immigrants, other melanated people. But we're talking about black America today. So, you know... Um, the Justice Department is with it. The FBI, you know, what about the FBI? You gonna start telling the FBI to to uh, start going after these white terrorists that the FBI in 2006 said was inf uh, white supremacists was infiltrating these police departments. And then you know the only people we're seeing brought up on terrorism charges are non-white people, or you know if they're white. They've somehow converted to Islam all of a sudden. There's a, a, a young white boy in our area here um, around Charlotte, on the other side of Charlotte. I was reading it last night, um, but uh, Rowan County, I think it may be, where you had this white boy who uh, converted to Islam and, you know, wanted to join ISIS and he was going to do this and do that. And another FBI set up. Is what it is, but you know, I'm talking about the Dylan Roos of the world. I'm talking about, you know, the White Citizens Council and all these other organizations. You know, you got the KKK now openly endorsing Donald Trump for president through their little organizations. Look, these are terrorists, man. These ain't white. That you know, really, these are not white supremacists. Because the, the people we see associated with the KKK, they go down to, you know, uh, we saw them in South Carolina get their butts whipped by a bunch of black people. But they had their little state-sanctioned little rally, their little hate racist rally and whatnot. And, uh, you know, these are real organizations. They have dual-paying members. They have access. 
They might not have a whole lot of assets, but they're not, you know, they may believe in the myth of white supremacy and thinking that they're supreme by virtue of their skin color or whatnot. But usually these are some of the dumbest, the some of the most uneducated, some of the most just retarded, you know, uh, uh, people on the planet. Uh, you know, and, and so, you know, they, the real white supremacists is like that we should be worried about the most. Not saying we don't worry about the ig little ignorant, stupid ones, but the Hillary Clintons, the Donald Trumps. Those are the powerful white supremacists, and they're, those are not even the most powerful ones. Then we'll have to start talking about kings and queens and and dukes and you know people with all kind of royal titles and and whatnot that attend the Bilderberg Burger Conference, but is is the CEO going to tell the FBI these are terrorists, man? You need to go after them. You need to start calling them terrorists. These aren't you know some disgruntled white supremacists or or what? These are terrorists. These people shouldn't even be able to operate. You know, if I can, if you can make it a crime for some of these Muslim organizations to donate to, let's just say, the government in Gaza, Ham, uh, what is it, Hamas, political organization, they won seats. Doesn't matter if they got self-defense units or whatnot. They got guns and an armed wing, and that doesn't matter. But you know, you want they they had uh, ambulance services. You know, they had survival programs for the people. That's why they won the elections. They won the hearts and minds of the people. Then you want to punish the people for exercising their democratic right to elect certain people. But you deem this to be a terrorist organization, and if somebody donates to it, oh, they brought up on terrorism charges. Well, what about people donating? to these white knights of Ku Klux Klan, whatever, white knights of America, whatever their little stupid names are. These are terrorist organizations. They advocate for violence against a certain population in the United States, and you are not doing all everything you can do to fight this terrorism. So we're demanding CEO of Obama that as the executive chief executive over the executive branch of government and you have all these agencies under your command that you start giving them some direction start giving them some orders just like you ordering the ATF to perform to uh, increase the number of licenses that they give out to gun dealers and so that they would then be required with their federal license to do background checks just like you told them to do that you tell the FBI to really start fighting white terrorism in this country so again I'm just reiterating a, a very important suggestion that I think you know uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson had for black people before she left this realm of existence do I expect black people no I don't I really, I don't expect the NAACP to put any, you know, pressure on him in the last year other than whatever they are doing. I don't expect Al Sharpton in the National Action Network to all of a sudden start blasting on Obama for not taking care of the needs of, of, of black people who are being preyed upon, enslaved. No, I don't expect any organization to put demands on him like that. Most of the black leaders, yeah, let's talk about black elected leaders because I had actually posted about this um, not long ago about what are we getting as in, in, uh, people as a constituency and we got these black representatives. What are they delivering to us? Because I'm looking at these other, you know, like Jew, uh, Israeli, we'll call them the Israeli lobby, the Israeli political caucus, that's what we'll call it, in the U.S. government. Man, they deliver a whole lot to Israel, a whole lot in, in free money, free military weaponry. 
man, they got some of the best health care in that country in the world, man. Way better than Obamacare. And that's cause of the Israeli political caucus. All these is people with dual Israeli citizenships, dual U.S. and Israeli citizenships. They were elected to Congress, in the Senate, in the House. Many of them, I mean, it's a bunch of them, in the Obama administration, in the executive branch. And they deliver. They deliver to their constituents. Who Some of them ain't even American citizens, but they deliver. What are we getting as black people from our elected leaders? People that we went out and voted for. What did they what have they delivered? Let's put them on, you know, under the on the block and um analyze how well they've been doing their jobs. What have they been doing to counter racism and white supremacy? in the U.S. government. And we can talk about that on the other side. I'm going to take a station identification break, kick some message music. You're listening to Black Talk Radio News. My name is Scotty Reed, broadcasting from behind the enemy lines of USA Inc. If you have a question or a comment, you can give us a call at 641-715-3660. That's 641-715-3660. The participant code is 549032-POUND. Of course, you hit star 6 and 1 to signal me. You can use the web-based flash phone or call us on the studio line, 704-951-5030. Make those calls when we come back on the other side of this break. This is Ron Hayes with Hood News, and you're listening to the Black Talk Radio Network. Stay tuned. This is Brother Elliot, host of Time for an Awakening, and you're listening to Black Talk Radio Network, new media for the new millennium. We have to begin to move to control our community. Everything that's in your community that you don't control is a weapon against you. Public education as it exists today is a weapon against black people. TV and news media, especially the WPP, white power press, white people's paper, and white people's power, are enemies against black people. That's what the white press does is that it makes black people an enemy of black people.
when we see our people being brutalized by white bigots, white racists, uh, we think that they are foolish to allow themselves to be beaten and brutalized and do nothing whatsoever to protect themselves. They are foolish. They, they, they should have the right to, do, to defend themselves against any attack made against them by anyone. If a dog is biting a black man, the black man should kill the dog. Whether the, the dog is a police dog, a hound dog, or any kind of dog. If a dog is sick on a black man, when that black man is doing nothing but trying to uh, take advantage of what the government says it's supposed to be is, then that black man should kill that dog or any two-legged dog, two-legged dog, two-legged dog. when black people wake up and become intellectually independent enough to think for themselves as other humans are intellectually independent enough to think for themselves then the black man will think like a black man and he will feel for other black people and this new thinking and feeling will cause black people to stick together and then at that point you'll have a situation where when you attack one black man, you are attacking all black men. And this type of black thinking will cause all black people to stick together. And this type of thinking also will bring an end to the brutality inflicted upon black people by white people. And it is the only thing that will bring an end to it. No federal court, state court, or city court will bring an end to it. It's something that the black man has to bring an end to, has to bring an end to, has to bring an end to. Light Talk Radio News, Scotty Reed on the, on this broadcast from behind these enemy lines. Are, are, are black elected leaders thinking like black people? Are they sticking with black people? I don't think so. I don't think so. Look, I was talking about this the other day. Israel gets billions of dollars every year from U.S. Treasury. All right. U.S. taxpayer money. Money that the U.S. taxpayers going to have to pay back. All right. Because it's really, you know, money printed up from the Federal Reserve that the U.S. government borrows and then doles out to whoever is doling out. Well, you got to pay just like on any other loan. You got to pay interest on that loan. And who's paying the interest on those loans from the Federal Reserve, which is not part of the federal government? All right. You do. You got to pay that money back. So we got the Israeli political caucus. That's not even a real name. I just made that up because, you know, um, they try to blend in and hide. You know, these are the white people who classify themselves religiously as Jews, and a lot of them have dual citizenship. I mean, I was shocked at the numbers I came across. How many congressmen and women, how many members of the Obama administration have dual citizenship in Israel? And I know that that has an impact on the way they vote. And so they vote every year to authorize uh, over a billion dollars in last year, there was some talk, a proposal about upping it from one billion a year and some change. And that's not even including the military hardware, but, you know, they're talking about upping that to five billion a year. Five billion a year that you and I got to pay back. You and I got to pay all this money back, right? We got to pay the interest on the loan from the Federal Reserve to give welfare to Israel. All right. So I know Charlie Rangel, a member of the Black Political Caucus, is working on reparations bill, but, you know, not making much headway with that. 
And then too, uh, slavery ain't never has never been ended. If it's not ended, then what are we getting reparations for? Past crimes? Well, what about the other crimes that's being committed presently? Should those should those victims be paid too? So I, I'm just thinking about the whole um, how illogical it is to ask for reparations for something that's not over. You should be pushing to end slavery, removing the 13th Amendment exception clause that allows them to put people into slavery. So anyway, Israel's getting all this money. And then the black political caucus is voting to give all this money to Israel. Check the records. Military weaponry, check. Cash, check. What is the black community getting? Is they voting to authorize any military packages that's going to put free guns and other type of weapons in the hands of the black community so that we can defend ourselves from our enemies that surround because that's what they say they say israel surrounded by enemies we got to give them this money we got to support the only democracy in the quote unquote middle east so we have to give them all this ammunition so because they've run out of bullets killing all those men women and children in gaza so we got to pass this special legislation so that they can get some more Bullets and bombs and, and what? Yeah, Israeli political caucus delivered that along with the black political caucus and probably the Hispanic caucus, too. Who knows? All of them. So anyway, we're not getting that kind of military weaponry delivered to us. But, you know, they did vote. I'm talking about the black political caucus along with all the rest of them. They did vote to get these police military grade equipment. So that they can kill us, give them bullets, give them all military APC tanks and whatnot. And man, all this military surplus gear. And we see how they use it. So, again, these black people are not thinking like black people, <laughs> according to Malcolm X. They are not feeling for the black people because they're voting to arm the 21st century slave patrollers in our communities. They authorizing that. They're voting to authorize the budget of the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Yeah. All of that. So, I mean, man, that's where our job package is, is in prison once they put us in prison. So, you know, it's time out for the intellectual inferiority complex that we find among our people man malcolm x was talking about political maturity a long time ago and it, it's just time for for i don't know what is it going to take are we do we need to start political mandatory political education classes you know compensatory political because that's one of the most important areas of people activity on the planet and we are not leveraging it we're not you know we we elect these people and they go up there and they do pretty much what massa want them to do whatever the system requires of them and we just keep participating in the vote year after year we rarely hold them to account i've seen some you know t black town hall meetings and those black people were not happy with their elective representatives Where are the jobs? So, it's just time out for that, man. You, 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 we, well, I can't say we because I didn't vote for President Obama. He was not offering any kind of package to the black community that was going to alleviate any other suffering. So, why, you know, and then you had Ron Paul, one of those years, he said, if I'm elected, I will. Close down the Drug Enforcement Agency. I'll, I, I can do that as the executive officer. And we will parole. Uh, no, he said I will pardon every last single person who is in a federal prison over nonviolent drug crimes. As long as they didn't shoot anybody. 
Long as they didn't commit other crimes and drugs were found in the commission of these other crimes. Long as they were just nonviolent, didn't harm anybody else, then I will I will pardon them. I will set them free. So, but President Obama, the CEO, he can let one or two out or 10, maybe even 20 out. And we will say, what a wonderful job he's doing. When he could certainly be doing more. He could be setting all them slaves free. He could set them free. Set the captives free with a stroke of a pen as the executive officer of the United States government. He's the executive officer. He has that power. Don't y'all know the power of the executive order? He can order these people to do this. He could order the the um the uh federal well it's really called Unicorn. And I was on their website today. Matter of fact, let me pull them back up. I took a screenshot because I'm gonna share this on New Abolitionist Radio's Facebook page, but here's a screenshot I took. These are the products and services provided by prison slave labor through the federal government, which has a bunch of factories apparently all over the United States where they're putting all our people to work. These are the list of, of products and service. Schedule products. Guess that's some kind of uh, list with all the products they offered. I'm on their website. This is on their website. Apparel and accessories. Awards and plaques. Contact center solutions. That's really customer service. Data services. What kind of data services they providing? Distribution and warehousing, logistics, electronics and components. You know, putting these electronic components on these smart bombs we're dropping all over the world. Electronics recycling. Something like what, what Walmart do when you take all them Christmas gifts back and, you know, because you want to exchange it or you want store credit or whatnot, somebody has to then repackage all of those gifts you return. Well, Walmart uses prison labor. But we're talking about Unicor. This is a corporation owned by the United States government. I'm sure this is under the executive branch because the Bureau of Prisons is under the executive branch. What else they got? Electronics recycling, energy efficient and green products, facilities and warehouse storage solutions, food service products, interior and exterior signage, mattresses, linens and draperies, office furniture and accessories, prescription and safety eyewear, printing and binary services. Wow, man. You mean to tell me if I want to print up some t-shirts for Black Talk Radio, I can get some prison slaves to do it? Wow. Rain solutions. License plates. See, that's what, we, that's what most people think that's all they make, right? It's license plates. Vehicle upfit remanufacturing and fleet services. Wow, man. They're producing automobiles. That's what they're doing, Refan remanufacturing. They're taking... Probably broken down uh, vehicles from the fleet of vehicles that the United States government buys every year, you know, for government employee cars. When those get certain mileage on them, they probably take them to the prison and then remanufacture them and, and upfit, you know, upfit the vehicles, give them upgrades and whatnot. And then I guess they're selling them. Now, they, they do this, they, they uh, do this in saying that we're helping these slaves. We're civilizing these slaves. Yeah, I'm serious, y'all. That's the language that they're using. And I'm studying this. I'm studying this right now. I mean, it is part of the state of the black America when the vast majority of these people are black. Got using pictures of black women and they look so happy to happy slave. Just happy to get out that cell and, you know, work on some cars and whatnot. The happy slave. But they was on there talking about how they, some of them, pay their um, 
fees and stuff, their court order fees that they got to pay, you know, to convict them. They got to pay for their trials and whatnot. The court cost and, and anybody they victimize got to pay them, you know. And again, I'm not talking about people who, who raped somebody, who harmed another person. I'm talking about all, the vast majority of the people on these plantations are in there for nonviolent so-called crimes. Man, look at this. And then when they try to justify it, they say, oh, we're teaching them how to get to work on time. I mean, y'all had to go read this stuff, but I'm putting together a questionnaire uh, to email the representative at Unicor, I guess, you know, the public relations uh, uh, person. And I'm going to ask them, how much are you paying these people? Are you paying them federal minimum wage? Huh? Because if you're not paying them federal minimum wage for these jobs that they're doing, and I would dare say if you would be paid 60000 a year to do with it, let's say call center work, let me speak from experience, and you're answering these calls for State Farm or, or whatever corporation out there contracted with the federal government to use these prison slaves, if I was hired to do that job, 60000 a year, how much you paying that prison slave to do the same job? Obviously, the corporation wouldn't, wouldn't benefit if they was paying the prison slave 60000 like they was paying somebody out here on the street. They, what would be the point of going to the, prison, the federal government? No. What, what are they getting? 600 a year? 6000 a year for a job that would pay on market a uh, fair labor market value would be 60 a year and you giving them 6000 you you know 6000 that's slave wages man that is the literal definition of slave wage so i i mean I, i'm going to echo this i'm going to keep talking about it during the CEO of, of America's last year in office is you got to do something now. You got to strike a blow against racism and white supremacy as much as you can. We know you don't run everything and, and whatnot, but, you know, you can take some bold action like you taking this bold action to uh, authorize that these new licenses be issued. To fight to people to sell firearms online and at gun shows, and so they can conduct background checks. You took some executive action on that. You take an executive action on for the gay community, so that they are not discriminated against in the United States military because they're gay. They can openly be gay and be in uniform and serve and whatnot. You're taking bold executive action on on. You know, bailing out these companies. I don't know if that was all executive a action, but he signed it in the law to bail out these bankers, Wall Street and whatnot. But, you know, black America ain't got bailed out. Where I bail out at? So, you know, I will I will continue to honor um, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson by doing something that she said. We should be doing as black people. If you gave him, given him a pass all these years. See, now I'm, I'm, I'm starting to repeat some of the stuff I hear in these clips from our elders, like Malcolm X was saying, you know, about the DC crash in Washington, DC. You know, they gotten everything out of the way that they wanted to get out of the way. They put you last. They can do this and they can do that. But they still ain't address your issues. And it's time. It's time that you become politically mature and you make demand. These people got in the office because of your vote. Now, you put that black president in the office. Without you, he would not be there. Don't you think it's time that we got a return on that investment? I do. How many of y'all gave $20, $5, $10, $20, y'all were among those record number of individual donors who donated to his campaign. Hell, him set records. Should we be getting a return on that investment? 
That's how other people play the game. That's how other people operate in the people activity. Area number six. Number six. It's time, y'all. I don't have anything else to say. Um, I was going to talk about some of the news that was reported, but we have shared some news for you. Uh, let me just go ahead and go to the website. I published an article last night about sister, a uh, Puerto Rican sister, Rosa McCle uh, Clemente. She ran in 2008 on the Green Party ticket, a uh, vice presidential candidate, running mate of uh, Cynthia McKinney, our our African sister, and um, you know, um, Miss Clemente published a status message on Facebook um, yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? She said she was asked her opinion about Hillary Clinton, and I mean, she, you know, while remaining codified, she went in on Hillary Clinton. And um, she spoke some truth about Hillary Clinton and, call, and said that Hillary Clinton, you know, participated in an illegal coup. Yeah, she did that. So you can read about what she had to say about Hillary Clinton and um, her role as a white supremacist in the system and all the things that she has done and yet to be held accountable for. And instead, we got your black leaders out there that you put in office that have done nothing for you. I don't even know, you know, yet some of you have been putting demands on them, but they haven't delivered. But they are out there endorsing Hillary Clinton. And now I read the other day Bill Clinton talking about he enjoyed being called the first black president. I mean, that's like, that's like rubbing salt in the wound, man. Come on. The mass, the mass enslavement, the acceleration of mass enslavement, really, under his leadership, working with Republicans, man, they did more as a couple to put more black people on a prison plantation than anybody in the history of slavery in this country, Bill and Hillary Clinton. And I say that as a matter of fact, and I'm not just, you know, engaging in conjecture here. They really did. Their entire careers, they've been linked to the private prison industry. So, uh, yeah, Sister Rosa Clemente uh, has some words for Hillary Clinton. Uh, you can check that out in the blog section on Black Talk Radio Network. Of uh, the re Democrats, Hillary Clinton, speaking of her, Bernie Sanders, and Martin O'Malley, uh, about 16, maybe 18 hours ago, had a so called, I don't know if you could really call this a debate. It was really like a question and answer session. It's not like, you know, all three were at the podium and had to answer the same question. It looked like in Iowa, ahead uh, of the Iowa caucuses, where uh, they just came in one at a time and, you know, these black and brown people got to ask them questions, although I've seen a whole lot of white people ask some questions, so I don't know how that was the black and brown presidential forum, but, you know, I haven't watched it in its entirety. It's like two hours long. I plan to watch it uh, later to see if anybody offering black people anything, um, but uh, I'll check that out. But I have published that on in the blog section um, on blacktalkradionetwork.com. Uh, so that's some of the news. You can find much more um, on our Facebook pages. you got more evidence of Turkey support of the Islamic State, so-called ISIS, in liaison with the U.S. and NATO. Uh, that is a report coming to you from the globalresearch.ca. It was written by Mr. Stephen Lindman, who I interviewed, I think, last month sometime. Uh, let me see. British Prime Minister David, David, no reparations, Cameron. Y'all remember David Cameron, Prime Minister of the UK, went down there to Jamaica and said, y'all can keep begging for reparations. Y'all not going to get them. So David, no reparations, Cameron, 
continues to resist oversight over his drone assassination programs. He got one just like the CEO of America, where he, he probably got a kill list too and have terrorist Tuesday meetings and, and just throw people on a list and say, well, which one we going to order to get take out, taken out now? You know, who we're going to extrajudicially murder. Don't charge them with no crime or nothing like that. Just send a drone, man. And then 90% of the drone attacks is killing civilians and not the intended people on a terrorist drone targeting list. Uh, but British Prime Minister David No Reparations Cameron uh, says that uh, the UK Intelligence Committee will not get access to the drone strike information. Uh, let me see. What else can we say? If y'all missed uh, the interview yesterday, that podcast is, is posted. Uh, 10,000 Promoting Peace Through Community Conflict Resolution. We had um, Brother Sharif Mohammed, Student Minister Sharif Mohammed, who is with the Nation of Islam. Um, and they have created the 10,000 Fearless Men and Women Headquarters of the South movement even bought their first community patrol vehicle to patrol uh atlanta uh neighborhoods in atlanta and so he talked about uh, many of uh, more programs that they hope to implement in the atlanta area um also want to you know make this a model nationally so go talk about that you know we had president i mean excuse me we had minister lewis farrakhan talk about 10,000 fearless men to stop the violence in the community. And we have been asking on this station where those 10,000 at. So uh, that question was answered yesterday. They started. They started recruiting. They started training. And they are accepting donations for people that want to help build this force for peace in the community. Donate. So go check. If you missed that yesterday, uh, go check it out. It has the links and everything uh, for that. All right, so uh, I think that's about it. I don't have anything else to report to you today. Um, I will not be on air tomorrow afternoon, but I will be on tomorrow evening for New Abolitionist Radio. Some of the programming coming up today, Tando Radio Show, of course, comes on at 6 o'clock p.m. And then tonight, uh, tonight is Tuesday, so it will be an episode of Why You Mad Son Radio at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. All right, so recognize the fact that you live behind enemy lines. is Battlefield America. Casualties are being created every day. We ain't really got no elected leaders looking out for us. The state of black America is extremely dire. Uh, but, you know, uh, we will uh, strive on. We will continue to survive. But at some point, we got to strive to win. You know, like the revolutionaries say, dare to struggle, dare to win. But we don't want to be killed over foolishness or because we were uncodified. Harm comes to us because we didn't take our due uh, diligence in being proactive for our safety. So recognize all those things, develop battlefield awareness, know what's going on around you. That means knowing, knowing where the police got checkpoints at and and you know staging in certain areas all this we got to share intelligence man with people in our community so you know so that we can prevent people from becoming victims but with that said peace and blessings to all of y'all be safe until tomorrow night i'll talk to you again you be scared i ain't scared i ain't scared Because only two kind of black